morning good afternoon and good evening everyone to the channel it simplified i hope you're having a good time with your family and friends in today's session on azure i'm here to talk about wvd also known as windows virtual desktop a quick overview on it and what are the different components involved when it comes to pricing it out so wvd is one of the new services which is being offered by azure and it's a desktop and uh, app virtualization service so we are all aware that when it comes to RDS services, there are different components which are involved in order to deploy that, such as uh, broker services, gateway, web access. You have to look into the networking, management, storage, just to name a few, right? Broker, gateway, gateway, web access, these are different roles which you need to be deployed on generally on a virtual machine. But what happens is with WVD, that's taken care by Microsoft. So it will be Microsoft managed. So a lot of overhead uh, from the infra perspective that you generally have to deal with when it comes to RDS will be taken care by Microsoft. But because cloud is a shared service model, there are still certain things that you need to uh, manage. So from the client perspective, you still need to manage the operating system. It can be either a client operating system, such as Windows 10, or a so operating system. Right, I'm gonna talk about the operating system in a moment. Uh, anything above uh, 2012, like 2016, 2019, will be good. But uh, the image that you're going to create, uh, that will be managed by you. And obviously, the application that you want to put on those, that will be also managed by, by you. So this is the responsibility of the client. But as I said that, most of the other uh, roles from the infra perspective, like gateway, the broker services, the networking management storage is taken care by Microsoft. Now that is what WVD and uh, again, it's a shared responsibility, but most of these are taken care of by Microsoft. Now from the pricing, there are two components to it. One is the licensing and other is the compute cost. And we'll look into one by one. Now, uh, important thing which I forgot to add is there uh, when it comes to generally RDS services, so you need to have a server operating system. But what Microsoft has done with the WVD is that uh, uh, they have uh, enabled a new operating system, which can be only, as of right now, can be deployed in Azure, which is a Windows 10 multi-session uh, operating system. And that will allow users to uh, access, uh, multiple users to access these uh, operating system at the same time. Now, from the licensing perspective, if you have either of them, like E3, E5, F1, right? There are some educational services too, like A2, A3, if I remember correctly. But any of those services, any of those licensing, which is based on per user, will be good in case you want to have uh, the Windows 10 multi-session operating system and uh, you want to give users the access uh, for that. But any of those licensing, and there is a listing uh, there is a documentation from Microsoft which details all those different licensing that you need for Windows 10 Enterprise multi-session that you can utilize. Now, in case, generally with the RDS services, again, you need to have RDS scales. But in case you're using any of these licensing E3, E5, and you're deploying on a Windows 10, uh, you don't need to have uh, uh, RDS scales. But in case you're deploying this on a server operating system, Again, 2012 and above, you'll need RDS scales for that, right? So something to keep in mind from the from the licensing perspective. But that's it from the licensing side. That's what you. Now the other thing is the compute cost, and that's where the Azure cost will come into uh, that you need to take care of. Now from the compute perspective, WVD uh, has dependencies on the domain services. Now, I'm just assuming here that, you know, you don't have any infra, so you need a domain controller. So obviously, if you have a domain controller on-prem, you can link that up, but I will assume that you don't have. But 
uh, you, that scenario is also possible. So you still need a domain controller. This can be on an ISVM or can be hosted uh, or can be managed by, by Azure, which is an Azure ADDS service, which is a PaaS offering. Any of these two services will work for you. And whatever the cost associated with that, you need to uh, you need to take it off, and you do need to do the uh, proper sizing. But you need to have a domain controller either in an ISVM or on a PaaS. That's one thing. Other thing is the host pool. So the session hosts. So in this, you can deploy this in a pooled environment or on a dedicated. So pool means that uh, you know multiple users will be sharing those resources. So say for example, if I have hundred users, I can deploy maybe ten VMs in a host pool, and those hundred users will be sharing those ten VMs between them. So I can either deploy under the pool category, or I can do dedicated. So for example, again for hundred users, I can have dedicated like one is to one ratio. So I'll be deploying hundred machines. Most of the customer that I deal with, they generally deal with the pooled. So they'll be sharing, but depending upon what size of machine that you want to deploy, there's a cost associated with this. So say, for example, if I am deploying a D to V2 series machine, so whatever is the cost, compute cost hourly with that, you need to pay for that. And whatever is the storage you want to deploy, it can be, it can be the operating system, whatever is the cost of the operating system disk size or the data disk that you'll be attaching with that. So that's you need to know. Obviously, you can utilize uh, uh, reserve instances. You can go with one year or three year. And there is a significant amount of saving that to be made in, in case you want to use. But you have pay as you go one year, three year if you want to lock down those resources. But that will be under the compute cost. So you need to, uh, depending on what series and how many machines and what kind of storage you want to use, it, whether it's uh, premium or standard, uh, the cost will be based on that. Other thing is generally in the production environment, you want to have uh, uh, user profiles, right? Uh, Microsoft has an option of uh, deploying that on, um, on Azure file storage. As of right now, you can either deploy on Azure file storage or you can deploy a separate file server. So in case the users logs off from one machine, still his settings will be retained so that, so that they have uh, uh, you know, seamless experience in terms of accessing their settings and their applications. You can either use Azure File Storage, and uh, as of right now, when I'm making this uh, video, Azure File Storage has the compatibility with Azure AD domain services. But in case you want to deploy this on a domain controller, it is right now in preview. It's still not uh, GA, but that will come into play. But something to keep in mind that you can utilize Azure File Storage, or you want to deploy that on a separate IS uh, uh, VM as a file server uh, to share your user profiles. You can do that too. Fourth thing is the backup. Obviously, you need to protect your machines, uh, right? The data on that one, you can use Azure Native Backup if you want to utilize. If you want to use the third party from some, uh, some of the other companies, you can utilize that too, but you need to have the backup. Now, other things that come to my mind is uh, as I said that uh, uh, you need to pay for the host pool for how long these machines are running. But in case you want to automate these processes, you want to shut down and shut off these uh, machine and restart at a specific time. If you know that, you know, the users won't be accessing those machines during specific time of a day or, 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 of a, or of a week, for example, they won't be using that on weekends like Saturday or Sunday. You can automate those processes by utilizing Azure Automation Services, which will relies on log analytics workspace. And depending upon how much uh, log size of the log that is being generated and for how long you want to keep these logs, there's a cost associated with that. So something to keep in mind. Some of the other things, maybe you want to use Security Center to analyze uh, what is happening in your environment, right? It will generate alerts for you. You can tighten the security. It is based on the number of VMs or the nodes that you're trying to 
analyze. Uh, so security center might come into play. And as I said that in this case, I'm just assuming that your whole environment is on uh, in, in Azure. You don't need any integrity with on-prem, but in case you want to have some sort of hybrid kind of environment, you want to have a site-to-site -site VPN connectivity, you need to also take into consideration the VPN gateway for site-to-site -site VPN, and there are different SKUs. You can go basic, you can go uh, GW1, 2, 3, 4, depending upon what kind of bandwidth uh, requirement is. Uh, that's also something to keep in mind. But these are some of the common uh, components that uh, you need to take into perspective when it comes to designing this from the cost. But uh, WVD is, uh, is uh, getting very popular, generating a lot of interest, obvious reasons being that uh, a lot of stuff is managed by Microsoft in the back end, and uh, uh, some of the customers, they might not have those kind of expertise in, in order to manage those RDS services. And definitely the Windows 10 multi-session, which is only available to be deployed in Azure, makes it even more attractive. So this was a quick overview on WVD and uh, what are the different components involved when it comes to pricing. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.